Welcome to Brainfluence. I'm Roger Dooley. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a short form video podcast instead of my usual longer form interview podcast. And it's only going to be me. And we're going to talk about one thing that may be damaging your customer experience. And that is what I call the Heisenberg effect. I hope you enjoy this. I want to begin by asking how you measure customer experience. I hope you are measuring it in some way, whether it's net promoter score or more detailed surveys, but obviously it's important to know what your customers think about their experience. But there's a caution, uh, and that is I want you to beware of Heisenberg, and I don't mean the Breaking Bad Heisenberg, the meth cooker guy, but rather the physicist. His famous uncertainty principle, and let me apologize in advance to any real physicists in the audience, but his uncertainty principle says that when you measure something, that thing changes. And of course, he was referring to subatomic particles, but that applies equally well, I think, to customer experience. Let me explain what I mean. Um, I think that the mere act of trying to measure customer experience all too often ends up affecting that experience or changing that experience, and usually for the worse. Let me tell you what I mean. Have you ever gone to a website with the intention of buying something or perhaps finding out more about that company's products or services, and the very first thing you see is a pop-up right in your face that you have to figure out how to close so you can get on with whatever you wanted to do in the first place? Now, uh, I've shown a slide like this to uh, audiences all around the world, thousands of people, uh, and I've always asked, well, how many people actually click, yes, I'll do the survey? In all that time, I probably had about three or four raise their hands and admit that they would indeed uh, provide some feedback after their web experience. Just a few months ago when we were traveling, I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express. Did it make me smarter? I don't know. You can decide that. But uh, there was something a little bit odd about the lighting in the room, and I figured, okay, I never fill out hotel surveys or airline surveys because they're always ridiculously long and complicated. But I said, okay, I'll just leave them a note to tell them about this uh, odd little thing I found in the room. And so uh, I did agree to complete their survey. And it started off pretty normally with a question about the overall level of service I experienced in the front desk on a scale of 1 to 10, of course. And I was okay, so I got through that. But uh, pretty soon I got to this awful screen about my room experience. Uh, each item was a scale of 1 to 10. And it was things like uh, the bed, the pillows, the electrical outlets. I don't even remember the electrical outlets. I assume there must have been some because I plugged my stuff in without a problem. But does that mean my experience was a 7 or an 8? Or maybe it was a 10? Or would a 10 be there were so many outlets that I actually noticed them? Who knows? Uh, I did not want to do this, so I said, okay, I'll just skip ahead to the end, make my comment, and get on with my day. I tried to do that, but of course, they wouldn't let me. Uh, I had to complete every single one of these. So I did what many of your customers would no doubt do, and that is I bailed out of it completely. Uh, now, uh, if you were lucky enough to be one of United Airlines' elite customers, uh, one of the great benefits that you get is a dedicated customer service desk. Uh, you can call in, the phone is answered almost immediately every time. The representatives are all U.S.-based and very competent, uh, and they recognize your phone, too. When I call in, a robotic voice answers and says, Roger, would you, are you calling about your upcoming reservation, or would you like to talk to a representative? And if you choose representative, do you get a representative? Uh, not immediately. You get to listen to a lengthy 14-second invitation to complete a survey after your call is done. 14 seconds doesn't sound like that long, but if you're in an airport or if you're in a hurry to leave for the airport, uh, it seems like an eternity. And then, in order to say no, you have to take your phone away from your ear, activate the dial pad, and then press 2 so that finally you can talk to your representative. Now, the real crime in all of this is that this affects 100% of their most elite, most loyal, highest revenue customers. Uh, this is really crazy. Uh, you know, who actually responds to these kinds of surveys? You know, uh, I think it is primarily people who are already angry for some reason. They already have some kind of an ax to grind with you or your brand. Uh, people who are so incredibly bored that they have nothing better to do than complete lengthy, complicated surveys. Uh, but the people who do not complete them are your loyal customers, your good customers, your high-revenue customers. Uh, they don't have time for this. 
Uh, so I encourage you to find out what people think of your customer experience, but not with these horrible bubble charts and one to 10 scales and such. Uh, instead, uh, don't make your customers think, make their responses intuitive uh, so that they barely have to process it at all. Uh, and give them immediately the opportunity to add something in their own words. Uh, just as I wanted to tell that hotel chain about my odd lighting experience, your customers may have something important to tell you, something good, something bad, but if they've got to fight their way through 25 other questions to get there, they probably won't do it. You know, this kind of data is messy. It doesn't fit neatly into spreadsheets. You can't provide different business units and different people with detailed qualitative, quantitative feedback, but uh, you will get good information that you can actually use. Uh, so I encourage you to make it easy, make it frictionless, because I have been often known to say friction changes behavior. And if your customers have a choice, they will take the easy path first. So uh, I think in short, the best customer experience insights are the easiest ones. And I don't mean easy for you, I mean easiest for your customers. So do not fall victim to the Heisenberg effect, make it easy. And if you find this interesting and would like to see some of my other stuff, uh, by all means, stop by the Brainfluence podcast available at all the normal podcast outlets, my blog at Forbes, my neuromarketing blog at neurosciencemarketing.com, and for pretty much everything else, including my books, speaking, workshops, and so on at rogerdooley.com. I hope you enjoyed this.